Hi guys, it's Matteo from Shoutouts UK. It's International Women's Day today, and we're going to be interviewing quite a controversial character, Katie Hopkins. We'll be talking to her about feminism and a bunch of other things. Check it out. I'm not a believer in International Women's Day, so today is not one of my favourite days of the calendar year. I like to think of it spelt with an I, so it's Women's Day. I just don't know why we would need uh, a Women's Day. I don't know why you need a Women's Day just because you have a biological function that you share. You've got the same chromosome. Does that really make you special? I don't know. Is there an International Men's Day? I don't think there is. And I think very often women imagine they want equality. They think they're campaigning for equality. I think modern feminists are hugely disappointing in that regard because we already have it. And in many cases, what they're actually asking for is special treatment, uh, things like a woman's prize for fiction. What you want a special prize just because you're a woman and you could write. You know, do we need a special category just so we can be recognised? I think that makes us look weaker, not stronger. Some would argue that International Women's Day is almost like a celebration for how women have come you know, from the right to vote, the right to get into work and so forth. Don't you think that's something that should be celebrated or is it just... If, so if International Women's Day is a celebration, you know, what are we celebrating? We're celebrating the fact we're women. So what was the Women's March? I was at the Women's March in Washington only because I went to see the inauguration of the 45th president not to join a Women's March. And, you know, I could look at those women and go, so, so why are you marching? Oh, it's because you're women. Oh, so why are you celebrating? Oh, it's because you're a woman. Those things are a random idea, aren't they? They're a random thing. That's like me celebrating a, it's an eye colour, gender. You know, we're born with gender. We're born with the colour of our skin, born with our eye colour. What do we celebrate those random facts as well? Should we have a, a national, you know, eye colour day for blue-eyed people? What, what's that all about? You know, don't, don't have arbitrary things like your gender or your race or your sexuality. Don't celebrate those things. Celebrate things that matter, like the fact that, you know, you are a powerful person, you've made a difference, you've delivered this much in industry. Fantastic. Celebrate that. Mm -hmm. Celebrate leadership. Don't celebrate the fact you've got a vagina. No, fair point. How many um, times can I scare you with the word a vagina? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, you mentioned the idea of um, feminism. Um, earlier. Um, many women see feminism as a positive movement to you know, empower women, see them as equal to uh, men in that fight for, mm. for equality. Um, however, you've often sort of butted heads with, with feminists throughout <laughs> your, uh, uh, your career. What is, what is your opinion on feminism, modern day feminism? Yes, I, so I think I'm a, a huge, well I'm quite small, but I'm a huge feminist. I think I'm kind of a, a new version, a new brand of feminism, a, a new wave of feminism, where being feminist is actually being really strong, competing on a level playing field, not expecting any special treatment and accepting the fact that if you, for example, take a year out of the workplace because you want to have a baby, perfect, that's your decision. But I'm not going to wait for you at work and I'm not going to promote you next to blokes that were still there that year working hard while you, while you were at home. You know, those are the sorts of basic... It's not about being equal. I don't believe in equal rights. I believe in equitable rights. Those are the things that matter. And just moving on to Trump and the US, obviously sure. um, Trump has created huge amounts of controversy. And um, one of the things I wanted to touch on was his ban um, for travellers from seven Muslim countries. What are your thoughts on that? And is that something, a policy that the UK should potentially adopt, considering that we are leaving the European Union and taking more control of our borders? What's your... Um, I don't think Trump has created a huge amount of controversy. I think he's had some pretty bombastic rhetoric on his campaign trail. And I think uh, the nature of America, the nature of people that call themselves liberals, is that they love to be offended. So it's not so much that he's created controversy. It's more that the offendertrons are waiting to be fed anything, waiting to throw them a nut and they'll dance for you. And that's very much how it is. Throw the offendertrons a nut and boy oh boy there they go and they'll dance for you he's used that brilliantly as a tool during the campaign Trump has and now he's still using it with his executive orders you know when you think about this uh, Muslim ban as it's been called the travel ban in seven countries what he's actually doing and what he's using the media for he's using BuzzFeed CNN all the left-wing media uh, is to say we're going to have strong borders and that is going to happen. Now, there may be a 90-day at the moment ban, which has been temporarily suspended and maybe back on today or not. Uh, but, you know, what he's actually doing is saying we will have strong borders. Uh, he's using the media to spread that message. He is going to build a wall. I think that's a positive thing. 
I think it also allows a 90 day period of reflection for people to think about how lucky they are to have a visa to live in the land of the free. I think that's a positive thing. And I think also it allows people to consider the fact that if we just sit around talking about terror, we don't actually achieve anything. And I think if we looked at Western Europe, places where we live, you know, we've seen how so many people talk about terror, maybe you might even get a hashtag, you know, maybe we're going to pray for Nice or maybe we're going to pray for Brussels or, or then we'll have to pray for Berlin and then we'll light up a building in the colours of the flag and then we'll, oh I know, we'll say we're standing shoulder to shoulder with that country. Yeah, OK, but what are you doing about it? So what I would say to people that are criticising the travel ban, the Muslim ban, whatever you want to call it, is OK, but what's your better idea? If you want to say to me, well, we're going to be really careful that we don't let jihadis in, OK, great, but have we done a fantastic job of that in Western Europe when we've had Nice, we've had Brussels, we've had Berlin? You know, we're not doing a good job of it. Maybe it's time someone else tried and maybe a travel ban is the right solution. OK, I mean, you speak quite highly of, of, of Trump and so forth. Do you see it with his presidency? Is there quite a positive outlook, therefore, for the next sort of four years? It's a tricky thing, yeah. It, the, the whole Trump presidency is tricky, so it depends where you're sitting. If you're sat here in kind of London-ish somewhere, uh, it's, a, it's very easy to be surrounded by the idea that he's a complete lunatic doing crazy things, that all of America is against him and no one believes a word he says. That's very much you know, an impression you could get if you were quite lazy, surround yourself with people that say the th same things that you do, listen to the news feed that you're choosing to hear. What you need to do is kind of step back and remember, 63 million people voted for Donald Trump. The Electoral College system is the system. There is a vast swathe of that country that is passionate about Donald Trump and believes he will make the changes they need. And actually, when you look at America, people can say, oh, well, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. You know, colour in the states, guess what? They're all red. They all belong to Donald Trump. America now is Donald Trump land. So, you know, you kind of need to move forward and recognise a lot of people are very positive about that. One of the things I'd be interested in terms of your readers, your listeners, your viewers is, you know, if Islam is so fantastic, why is it that Muslims that seek asylum or refugees or want to come to a different country, why would they choose Christian countries? It's just a question that I'm curious about and maybe somebody has the answer. If you're a Hopkins hater or maybe you, you hate Trump or you hate um, the fact that we have Brexit, uh, you see the rise of Marine, uh, it looks like in the Netherlands, you know, the right wing will probably win there as well. You'll just see a lot more of me because as you close in the walls of the things that you're allowed to say, suddenly the amount of voice and volume and airspace for these people, people like me, it gets a lot noisier. The reason I have a radio show is because there's a place outside of London called the rest of England, the rest of the UK, and they feel like they're not heard because London is a foreign country to the rest of the UK. It does not in any way reflect how the rest of the UK thinks, which is where I position my home. And so that's why I have a voice is because you guys, and I'm talking to the Hopkins haters, are squeezing in the things we're allowed to say, which gives people like me a huge volume of unspoken stuff that I get to speak about. So you are creating more of me, Don't which is a joy. <laughs> <laughs> Hurrah! I'm sure that's a fantastic <laughs> concern. Um, and just, I guess, one last question is um, on Brexit, with the, the way Theresa May and the current government have been sort of dealing with Brexit, as you know, the um, Brexit bill was mm? debated. Um, and there was a lot of criticism about how short it was and how the government has been quite secretive of, of the whole affair. What are your thoughts and opinions on, on that? I mean, I presume you think it's a good thing that we are leaving the European <laughs> Union and taking control of your borders, but what, what's the... Uh, yeah, so I'm a massive, I'm a massive Brexiteer. I like the way I keep saying that I'm massive. I'm a massive feminist. I'm a massive Brexiteer. So, yeah, I'm a big um, Brexit fan. I think it's absolutely perverse uh, that 17.4 million people voted uh, to leave. And we were told, you know, a little white thing came on our doormats all around the country saying, whatever you decide, we will implement. Now, I know that's been rolled back on and we were told it's advisory and that the Supreme Court knew better and they could tell us we voted the wrong way. OK, I accept all of that. But, you know, ultimately, 52% is still a majority. People say, well, it's a very narrow majority. Yes, but you know, if you're doing a 100 metre race, you don't say to kind of Usain Bolt, oh, you only won by just a little bit. Uh, you know, we still won. 
we still needed Brexit and we just need to move it quickly. And I think the fact that, you know, Article 50, uh, Parliament did commit, or the House of Commons commit to triggering Article 50, was actually a genius thing. And uh, Jeremy Corbyn, I disagree with every single word that comes out of his mouth, mostly, but I love him deeply. I think he's fantastic. A guy who stands by what he says, who said, no, we're not going to vote this down. We're not going to vote against the will of the people. We're going to vote with the will of the people. We respect democracy for, first and foremost. Fantastic. I love him. Like, if I was going to have an affair with a politician, it'd definitely be Jeremy Corbyn. Definitely. I love, I love the fact that he says what he thinks, he stands by what he thinks, and I love the fact that the rest of the country is behind him. So even though his own party can't stand him, the rest of the UK likes a guy who says what he thinks, thinks what he says and stands by it. And so, fantastic for me, I love him very much. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and if you can, do please join Shoutout UK for £1 a month. Please. <laughs>